れれれれれれれれれれれハロウィンは just around the corner, so you gotta prepare early. So hopefully this puts you in a little spectacular mood. Hello, hello.、Yes. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. Hello, LaDonna. Hello, Olivia. I'm so excited to get into the Halloween spooky、um, October and so much excitement going on in our world today, isn't there? There is indeed. So stick around for a fantastic episode today. Today is Thursday, October 6th, 2022. Hello to all of you. And our question of the day is Do you know how Halloween got started? So stay tuned because LaDonna is going to give us a little lesson back in time because it's Throwback Thursday. We're going to go back in time. To find out the origins of Halloween and how it became so popular. So go ahead, chat with us, throw in the comments right now. What do you believe about Halloween? Why is it so popular? Do you celebrate Halloween? So let us know. Go ahead, chat with us in the comments right now as we get started on our show. Excellent. And、um, I love this background that you put together with the spiders and spider webs. <laughs> <laughs> so our background has a background of the day, and now let's get into outfit of the day. LaDonna, what do you have on today? Well, I just have a rustic orangey top on today.、Um, silky, very lightweight, soft. You know, it's、um, long sleeve, but not warm because it's too thin. But then I have my spooky Halloween. Hair bow, hair clip. Look at that. The orange and the black and the bats and the spiders. And I just, you know, I love Halloween. I celebrated it as a kid. And my grandbabies, now they've all、um, done Halloween, but it's a lot different now than what it was when I was a kid. So,、um, it's even different from when my girls were kids to when my grandbabies now kids. Oh, you know, different from the older grandbabies than the newer grandbabies. So, you know, Halloween is spooktacular. Did you, did you trick or treat when you were younger, Olivia? I did. I remember、um, my mom used to take us to the malls. Because they would have, and that was a much safer option, she felt, versus having us go around the different neighborhoods. So she would take us to the malls, and inside these malls, when we used to still have malls, right? There's a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where are those? <laughs> so there's a throwback. And、um, it was so wonderful because the, each of the stores, right, would decorate and they would give out candy, and we were all in one building, and they had like different activities, they had face paint, all these things in one place. So, I really did enjoy that. Exactly. Exactly. Now, see, mine was door to door, no matter if you knew the neighbor or not. And we're going to get into that a little bit later, even more spookier things that have changed over time. But there's a lot of things about Halloween that I, I guess I'm a little dorky. I didn't know. <laughs> so. Uh, my parents forgot to tell me about that, and I guess school did too. But now that I look back, I do remember some children did not celebrate Halloween. It's making sense now after all these years. <laughs> so. so let us know, you know, answer the question here in the chat. You know, how has Halloween changed for you? So please share with us your thoughts before we dive into today's memory lane lesson. All right. And I'd love to show off what I'm wearing. So here we go. Yes. I've got these fantastic earrings on. Look at this. I got my little skeleton. Oh, look at that. I love that. <laughs> and then I also have spiders and the cobweb. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a vintage vest. Look at this beautiful vest. It has all the elements like the boo, the pumpkin. Oh, I love those kind of vests. Has a little ghost here. And look at these buttons. You'll love these buttons, LaDonna. Like, I got pumpkin buttons. <laughs> Now, is that a vintage vest? Because it does look like a vintage vest from the 80s. It is a vintage vest, indeed. Yep. Yes. Yep.、Yes. This was is made in the USA. Is that a pumpkin brooch? So, number one, it was made in the USA. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> And、um, yeah, so like, it's, yeah, from I think like the 80s or 90s for sure. Because it's definitely、um, not something you can see. The 80s, the vests were very, very popular. 
Right? Because they don't make vests. No. Nowadays. In the right. 80s, they were very popular. And there were some creators out there that did um, things like that for Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. And they were very creative. And I love that. I guess it's a pin or brooch that you had on your pumpkin. Love that. Love that. It's a hair clip, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> the, the ghost on my sweater stole my voice. <laughs> go away, Casper, go away. Casper, Casper stole my voice. Okay, so yes, yeah, so this is just a um, homemade piece of hair accessory. And you can do yes. this with anything. Awesome. But I think there's a pin. Yes. But you know, say it's a hair piece. So I'll just put in my hair like so. Yes. Just like my <laughs> hair clip here, I put it on a ponytail wrapper. So you can use it in so many different ways. And I custom made it. Oh, so there you go. We um, have more for sale. Can we find these? I do. Boards? I do. I have some. Oh, here's one of my favorite. Look at this one, Olivia. Ooh. Tree. See? And it's got the silky bow on the back and the polka dotted purple. Isn't that cute with the little bling bling? So um, you know, I just um unloaded these from a box. So I will get them these um put online probably tomorrow. So everyone can start viewing them and hopefully purchase and um, put them in and send us pictures of these in your hair, a little girl's hair. Wouldn't that I be would, awesome? That'd be such a fun contest. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. And you know, when my girls were growing up, we had all kinds of, all kinds of hair ribbons and hair bows until they started dressing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that was gone. But we, I used to have a lot of fun as a mom dressing them up in these. And then when Arian came along, my granddaughter, I started making hair bows again. And she has all kind of big, little. And, you know, a hair bow like this in a boutique store, $12 and up. And, I mean, nothing under $12. And from me, you can get them for $4. Brand new, custom made, one of a kind, did not make more than one of the same kind. So you don't have to worry about showing up somewhere and everybody having your hair bow. I love it. I think there's a, a Jojo Siwa who's like really big into hair bows. And all the girls love to follow Jojo. And so hair bows. Oh, became yes. And I we just loved hair bows. And um, I still wear, I'm the only one out of us, though, that still wear hair bows sometimes. So. Well, now they're available in Home Sweet Home Treasure. So you, too, can have a custom yes, made hair bow. <laughs> add your custom made hair bows. One of a kind. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, LaDonna, for sharing. And, you know, this is a brand new month for us, so we are um, offering a brand new contest. So send in your recipes. You know, we're collecting recipes that have apple and pumpkin. And um, I think we've already got a few more submissions today. Do you want to walk everybody through them? Um. Yes. All right. Yes. And keep sending them in. You can send more than one. Just keep sending them in. And they don't have to, they can be drinks. They can be um entrees whatever it is pumpkin and and or apple everything it can have both or just pumpkin just apple drinks desserts entrees breakfast it doesn't matter send them in submit them um go find us on our live recordings and post the recipes there i olivia or i one will grab them we are going to put your name in a drawing for a mystery gift bag, uh, free of charge, free, free everything. I'm even going to pay the shipping on that. And um, also, you'll be able to get in our virtual cookbook that's going to be out. So here is a delicious, easy cake mix pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. It is so easy. Only three ingredients. 
and it is from Rhonda, and she submitted this, a box of spice cake mix, pumpkin puree, and your chocolate chips. Preheat your oven, get your muffin cupcake liners ready, and I mean, so easy put together. Mix together the spice cake mix and pumpkin puree, and well blended. It will be thick, that's okay. Add your chocolate chips, and then fill your uh, cupcake pan three quarters of a way. That's it. And yummy, delicious. She sent this in two days ago. I baked these yesterday and they were great. Now I have the recipe because I'm the only one in the house that likes pumpkin. So I, I have the recipe and baked them and then gave away the other mixture, but that's okay. Yummy, delicious. And then look here from Elizabeth. Um, she sent in two recipes, one for a pie crust, very easy to make. Um, I have not made it today or yesterday, but I have used this similar recipe and made it before so easy. Or you could always just store by it if you want to. And then she makes these delicious apple pies and it's um a, it looks like a lot of different ingredients but when you do bake so many times it is but it's a pinch of this and a pinch of that so just follow the recipe slice your apples thinly she does not use an apple pie filling she does her own apples it's fresh apple pies and then you can add the milk as an option if your milk tolerance or whatever you don't have to add the milk um, you will need two pie crusts, one for the bottom, one to, for the top. Pour everything in and then put your top on your pie crust. And you, you can use a fork to, around the edges to close them up. Or you, you I use my thumbs um, or a spoon and make little designs. But some people just use forks. You know, my grandmother used to make her own and she would just use a fork all the way around a pie crust. And then you can either cut... Um, the top or poke holes in the top and people will say, well, why do you do that? Because you want your heat from your apples inside to come out so it doesn't rip open the top layer of your pie. So yummy, delicious pie. And, you know, apples and pumpkins, what a time of year for those in October and November with all the holidays coming up. So thank you, ladies, for sending in those recipes. Now, do you have apple pie during um, this time of the year or any time of the year, Olivia? I love apple pie, especially with like one scoop of vanilla ice cream. Yes. Like a warm piece of apple pie and then vanilla ice cream. Yes. Something about that combination. Um, I absolutely love it. Yes. Um, now, my mom never sliced apples. She would use the apple pie filling if she made apple pies. That's not something she really made a lot of. But I remember as a kid going to the donut shop on Sundays and she would buy the day old um, turnovers and they would have apple and chocolate and it seems like there was something else, um, maybe cherry. And she would buy those and they would be cheaper because they were day old from Saturday. And then she would go home and she would warm them up and then put vanilla ice cream on the top. Pretty dang good. That sounds heavenly now that you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for sending those recipes. And so we want to make the show as interactive as possible. Like you can be a part of it. And so you're, we're running a recipe contest. You can get your recipes in. We'll feature you. We'll highlight you. It's all going to go into this amazing online digital cookbook that LaDonna is preparing. And um, going back to our question of the day, you know, join the conversation. How did Halloween become so popular. So let's go now, take a trip down memory lane with LaDonna. All right, do you know, where did Halloween come from? Okay, I had no idea. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I just figured somebody made it all up and we get to go get free candy. I mean, honestly, that's what I thought. So, 
it developed from the pre-Christian holiday. How would you say that word, Olivia? Samhain? Samhain? I don't know. Samhain? <laughs> Maybe. Um, in the early medieval Ireland. Now, it says November 1st, beginning of a new year. I researched and I never found why November 1st was considered the new year, but I maybe back then it was. You know, we've learned different things about, you know, November wasn't in the regular calendar at one time. No, that was September. Remember you told us about September. Being, oh, yes, it was September. Yes, September. Yeah, September yes. The number seven and it was not in the seventh place of the calendar. <laughs> right, right. So there you go. I mean, I don't know what it is, but something for some reason back then, November 1st was the beginning of the new year. Well, I I remember when I was going to school that there were some that did, was not allowed to celebrate Halloween because we would have back then you would have a Halloween party at school and she wasn't allowed to sit with us. She would go to the library. And um, because she wasn't allowed to participate in anything like that. So maybe that's why. Maybe it was because of a religion that she belonged to, a religious um, organization. I don't know. But I remember that, um, you know. But, yeah, I had no, I really had no idea that it used to be, it was all about religion back then. Did you know that, Olivia? I mean, I knew that there was something or some reference to like uh, harvest time, like All Hallows Eve. So I remember learning well, that. So you knew school. more than I did then about it. <laughs> and how about those nails? Do you love those nails, Olivia? They look pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> so let's sharpen your knowledge. What is <laughs> Halloween? Um, a holiday that marks the day before the Western Christian feast of all saints or hollows and initiates the season of all hollow tide. Never knew that. Sorry, I thought it was all about trick-or-treating. I just did. That's all I was ever, that's all I ever knew. And for so, someone to have those nails, they must never have to do dishes. Well, I was going to say, speaking of these nails, there's a new trend that I see called coffin nails, where they have the really long nails and they have the tapered uh, rectangle tip that's meant to look yes. like a coffin and they're called coffin nails. <laughs> they're I don't understand. And I'm glad they can do it. I, I do wear my nails. My nails are something I do for me. That is one thing I do for me. But if I, I can't wear them very long and I can't, I see so many women that do wear them very long. And I'm like, do you, I, I think to myself, how do you do, how do you load the dishwasher like that or change a baby's diaper or uh, I, I don't know, but they're, I or mean, type. like, how do you type yes, on your how, phone? How do you, do, or even on the keyboard of your phone, how do you do? But you know what? I guess you can do anything that you practice. You know, Thank so, you. Um, but I love how they put the uh, 3D flowers on those nails as well. So, yeah, in the red tips. But yeah, I thought that was really cool when I seen that I had to put sharpen your knowledge. <laughs> Of course. And speaking, you know, we're talking about outfit of the day and how you can, you know, dress up in the mood, right, for, for the holiday. And um, I think it's a lot of fun because now they have those, like, stick-on nails, you know, and they have the little nail decals you can wear and yes. dress up your nails. And they're really cute. You don't have to go to this extent of nails, but you can, like, put little stickers for sure. Yes. Yes, you can. You know, whatever makes you feel good. And then, you know, for the ha Halloween, you know, you can get the little stick on nails. So how did Halloween become popular in the U.S.? Um, okay, again, I'm a dork and I didn't know this. <laughs> the European immigrants in the 19th century brought Halloween customs with them and helped popular popularize the holiday. 
By the 20th century, Halloween became one of the principal holidays in the United States, especially among children. Now, that's all I know is the last part of that is Halloween for kids. When you become adults or teenagers, you do different things. And when you become adults, you do different things. But I didn't know anything different. And you know what? I just thought it was always here, I guess. I don't, you know, I just never really thought about it. Um, but yeah, what a, um, uh, it's, it's very fine to know that you didn't know everything about something that you thought you did. Right? Well, did you like know you all of that, that, Olivia? Well, I, I can see what you mean because, you know, we grow up, you know, thinking these things are just kind of falling along with what everybody else talks about without further looking into it. So I really appreciate that you go back into sort of these um, historical roots about why people yes. celebrate. And, you know, some people have a, an issue with the holiday because it's a pagan or, you know, devil worshiping or something like that. But whatever you make of it, it's a fun holiday for sure. It's not just about candy. It's about just perhaps even just like, you know, um, exploring the spooky side. <laughs> yes. You know, and I never thought of it anything other than fun, you know, spooky, um, you know, even when I went into Home Depot, now I could have never done this with my granddaughter because she's scared so easily. Um, but with um, Bri Bri, we went into Lowe's and they already had their Halloween spooky clown and I think it was Dracula or something. And he wasn't with me. So I got on my phone and said, look what granny found Bri Bri. And and I told Christy when I said it, I said, now tell him it's spooky. And he called me on Facebook, you know, when we can see each other, goes, Greedy, why so spooky? <laughs> but to me, it's just fun. And for him, it's just fun, you know. We buy the blow, he his mom and dad went took him to buy the, a couple of blow-ups for the yard. And you know, it's just fun. Exactly. And I also think about, too, because I think in Mexico, they have a similar holiday that they called, um, you know, Day of the Dead. And it's a way for them to honor, right, all the ancestors and people that might have passed away. And doesn't, like, New Orleans have something during how – I mean, they, they dress up in different times. And I think New Orleans – I'm not sure, but I think they do something um, special during the Halloween season, too, of the parades and things like that, I believe. I'm um, sure. But yeah, it's uh, it's really different. But I just all thought it was about candy and trick or treating, decorating your house, and costumes. I think it's so costumes, fun to be able yes. to to wear costumes. You know, and you've got like, a favorite character. Like I love the Star Wars costumes. You know, people the what like Star Wars? Oh yes, yes. Right. So people have, all and I think this costumes. year Hocus Pocus is going to be a big one because you know Ooh. the new movie came out and. Um, I really think that will be a big one. Oh, I forgot to tell you. So like living up in Boston, we have, um, Halloween town, Salem. I mean, Salem. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. right. Now that you talk about Hocus Pocus, I mean, that was a setting, right? Of like the Salem witchcraft trials and the whole town goes all out for Halloween. Yes. Mark and I went there for the first time a few years ago for one of our anniversary trips. And we, we spent a lot of time in Boston, love the Boston area. We went to Salem, did yeah. the tours, you know, learning more about it. It's just, you know, it's fascinating to know other ways of than what you already know. Yeah. That's always a fun time to visit Salem. Yeah. So if yes. you have not visited Salem for Halloween, like make sure it's on your one of your bucket lists or vision board items that LaDonna always talks about. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because that was one of our bucket lists is go to Boston, go to Salem, do that area. You know, we, we loved it. OK, so this one I'm so excited to get into because has Halloween changed? Absolutely. Now. When let's talk about bobbing for apples. <laughs> do you think we do that anymore? <laughs> Not with COVID, no. <laughs> but even before COVID, we didn't do bobbing for apples for many, many years. And, you know, we didn't do, um, we didn't, I don't think our carnival was during this time when I went to school, but we did have a school carnival. 
And we always did bobbing for apples and the cakewalk. And I remember always loving that as a kid. And it was free. We never had to pay back then in the dinosaur years. But then my girls, my Misty and Christy grew up and we did the carnivals. And it was always during this time of year, September, October. And um, I don't, I think at the very beginning we did bobbing with apples, but then they started disappearing. And then for sure now, we're never, ever, ever going to see bobbing for apples ever again. But I remember that being so much fun trying to catch an apple in your teeth and your face getting wet and we never cared. Did you ever do that, Olivia? I've never had the pleasure of bobbing for apples. <laughs> okay. You're just going to have to fill up a pot of, and with an apple and just, just <laughs> pretend to be a kid again. Um, I can have candy apples, right? Like the caramel. Yes, caramel yes. Candy apples. I have yes. that. I've done hay rides. Oh, hay rides. Hay yes. Rides. yes. And haunted houses. I love haunted houses. Um, you know what? As long as Big Daddy is in front of me, I love haunted houses. <laughs> so let's, okay, so Bobby for apples. We're never going to see that again. Costumes. When, and maybe it's from where I was from back then. You know, I come from a poverty family. Um, we came from a small town, but we never, ever, as far as I can remember back, ever buying a costume when I was a kid. It was grab a white sheet and be Casper. Um, I remember one time that I was like 16, I made a strawberry shortcake outfit for me to wear while I was car hopping at the Sonic. I had the little hat, the little dress and everything, but I, I sewn that myself. I didn't go buy it, you know. Um, we would always, you know, witches, you know, just find something black, tease your hair up, stuff like that. We never really bought, I mean, um, I remember when um, the three Otis kids were younger. I mean, their costumes easily $70, $80 a piece. Um, and now, you know, baby Bri Bri, he's going to be, you know, last year he was Spider-Man. And that was still a little, you know, that was a few bucks. And then this year he's going to be, uh, I don't know, some kind of purple, some kind of dinosaur that, the Power Rangers has now or something. I don't know. I haven't seen that character yet. <laughs> and so costumes are outrageous, outrageous expensive sometimes. So, you know, try to buy pre-worn outfits, costumes, trade out from, you know, your older brother or sister or your neighbors, maybe get with them and trade out you know, um, costumes so that it's not so expensive. Candy. Let's talk about candy. Number one, candy is extremely expensive these days, but it's so much fun. Now you see that little pumpkin. It is a plastic pumpkin. Now we did not use plastic pumpkins and nor would my parents ever buy anything to hold candy in. When we went trick-or-treating, it was in a pillowcase. My mom would go get us a pillowcase and we would fill up those pillowcases. And I mean, remember, I came from a poverty family. We went to every neighborhood in the town that we could before time was cut off. And it didn't matter if we knew them or not. And then we'd dump all the candy in a big box. I mean, we would fill up these pillowcases pretty quickly. And we would have candy for the rest of the year. I, I don't see why we did that, but that was the way my parents did it. But it is one of my great memories. So it's okay. It was a good memory. Uh, so did you ever use pillowcases, Olivia? No, we had a proper bucket. <laughs> uh, yes, my, my girls did too. Remember, Olivia, my girls are your age. So I figured you were going to say that now. Saying that when my grandsons and my granddaughter got a little older, like preteen, they didn't want to carry buckets and stuff like that. They went to the pillowcases or, you know, a plastic Walmart bag. 
something like yeah. that. Because <laughs> you know, it wasn't cool. cool to, you know. But I remember when my Misty and Christy was young that McDonald's uh, gave away these plastic pumpkins with the Happy Meals. And I found one from their days. Look, it's broken, but I found <laughs> one in my uh, boxes from when they went trick or treating. It is broken, but see, it had a Happy Meal in it at one time. And they did use those when we could get those. And then I did hear a commercial that they are going to do that. That some McDonald's, is, some McDonald's is going to do that this year. Look at that. He's broken, it's, but it's seen a lot of wear and tear. But Ladonna's going to super glue that, right? <laughs> Duct tape it, super glue it. I'm not going to throw it in the trash, though. I can tell no. you that. Because it's going to go. If I can't figure out something, we'll go in the recycling bin. But you know, I was thinking. Why can't I cut out this face and put it on a notebook, a binder, something like that, right? And that would be so cute to do that. And, you know, you could just use a pair of cutting um, pliers or um, sharp scissors to do that. No big deal. And go right on the binder. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did hear McDonald's is going to do that this year. I don't know if that's all McDonald's or some McDonald's, um, but they are going to do the plastic buckets again. They haven't done those in years that I know of. Um, that's a great idea. Yep. And, yeah. And, you know, you'll put a good use for it because it will hold candy. You know, you will go trick-or-treating and you can put use that for candy. <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, what I did is that, you know, the those came from that bucket's pretty old, but I would use it for decor after they got done with it, you know, for Halloween. Um, and then um, on our slide too, there was trunk a treat. Okay, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as trunk a treat, okay? So then I started seeing it even after my girls grew up. I didn't really see trunk a treat while they were growing up. The mall, yes, we would go to a few houses in our area and we would always go to the mall. Some years that it was raining that we went full time to the mall, the real indoor malls. Um, but trunk or treating, I really didn't know about until after my girls were older. And then I had never done one. And my Arian, when she was in preschool, her private preschool had a big carnival. And I took my car and Mark and I did, we did a trunk or treat and we won the first place contest as well. I dressed up in a witch. I had the dress, the heels, the hair, everything. And we decorated the back end of the car and had the scarecrows and everything out there. And um, that was a lot of fun, but never heard of that until just, you know, maybe in the last 15 years. Wait, so everybody would come and like deck out their trunks and have candy. Um, you would have to sign up if you wanted. It's like a chili contest. Some signed up for that and some would sign up for the trunk or tree and you would decorate your cars. And then the kids would go from car to car to get their candy. Trunk to trunk to get yes, their candy. Yes, trunk to trunk to get their candy. Huh. And it was part of their fall festival and that was a lot of fun. We just opened up the back of my SUV and it was all decorated. I was a witch. The kids would come by. We had the music on and everything. And of course, I won first. So there you go. Well, was, this is the first time I'm hearing that, but I think that would be a lot of fun for the neighborhood. Because um, some little neighborhoods little. do that, and churches do that now, and um, some of the schools do that. Um, because it's getting where it's so unsafe for the kids to go out house to house. You know, when I was growing up, we went everywhere. It didn't matter if we knew them. And now it's okay, we'll go to our, you know, the few neighbors we know, or we'll go to Mamaw's house or Granny's house or Aunt Bob's, who's ever. But it's just so much, you know, and there were sometimes there was some craziness going on even in my time, though. I remember the hospitals would x ray the candies for free and you would take it to the hospital and they would x ray your candy to see. Back then, though, they just watched for needles. They never what worried about drugs, but now we have so much more than needles to worry about in our Halloween candy. 
Exactly. And, uh, you know, so, and then the decor, uh, I think the only thing on this uh, that we haven't talked about, I love decorating for Halloween. I love decorating for every, um, everything that I can, you know, but Halloween is fun. But, you know, again, it costs money to decorate. So it's almost like Christmas. I decorate, I bundle it all up, put it in a box, in a plastic bin. It goes to the attic and then I add to it the next year, you know, or, and then I send some away, <laughs> so, you know, I no longer live in the city, but I still want to decorate if nothing else for me, because we don't get trick or treaters here. But I always make sure like I'll make, you know, make sure Bryson gets decorated. His yard gets decorated. And then because he has fun with it. Um, the others, they're way too big for that. But, um, you know, it's just it's just for me. Halloween is just fun. Yes. We I think don't all do it theories. as a religious activity. Um, I don't. I never even knew of that, you know, so I, uh, and I do know that some people are against celebrating, but for me, it's all about just having fun. It's nothing else, you know? Um, yes. And you have all these stories and memories that you can share. And yes. And I'm thing. sure you do too. Like you said, you used to go to the mall. Absolutely. And what was your favorite costume when you were going? So, yes. So all this to say, you know, whatever you make of the holiday, it's important that, um, you know, you ca you capture the memories, right? Memories of families, of friendship, uh, growing up with your kids and um, costumes, you know, costumes can be pretty expensive. So, you know, why not DIY, DIY your costumes? I think you can get really creative with that. And um, also, you know, buy costumes that are on sale. <laughs> so the after Halloween sale is always a good time to, to plan ahead or maybe you only wear costumes once. And so shopping homesweethometreasures.net, right? You can get some previous costumes, pre-worn costumes for a reasonable price. But let's That's, talk a little bit about, you know, trick-or-treat safety, because I think you've got some slides on that. Yes, right? yes. And, you know, going back to the costumes, you know, there were many years that we were hobos because you can decorate, you know, put a pillow under a, a big shirt and baggy <laughs> pants. And, you know, because we were, we had to be creative with our costumes. So, most of all, we want our children to be safe, no matter how, what age. And so I did find this, um, this information, and I really hope that you will take away something from today's show and remember it and go back in time in your mind and share with others. Remember, it's all about the journey. But remember safety, trick or treat safety, you know, pick a mask that's easy to see out of. And you know what? We've been in fault. If you don't buy the right size, the kiddos can't see out of those masks. Um, we've done that. I mean, it's so easy to do. Find a costume that fits to prevent trips. We've done that, too, where I've had, you know, the pants are too long or the capes are too long and you got to be careful. Roll them up tack them up, sta staple them up. If you're not a seamstress, just take a stapler and staple, you know, to make them shorter, whatever it is. It's all about keeping safe. You know, one thing we've always done is we've always went with a flashlight. Always. Maybe a couple of flashlights sometimes. Um, also, when the kids were younger, we would always put those reflecting bracelets on their arms or necks so that we could, you know, because do you know how many Spider-Mans will be out there this year? <laughs> a lot. And there will be a lot, your, you know, your kid's age. And, you know, when you take your kids, they want to run. And, you know, you don't want to grab the wrong Spider-Man. <laughs> so <laughs> make eye contact with drivers before crossing in front of them. As Even if you're not trick-or-treating, if you're just driving home, be careful. These kids, they don't think. They just go door to door, darting across the streets, and they just look for the kids. Be safe. Always walk on the sidewalk. Check your child's candy before they eat it. Use reflective tape. Now, we never use tape, but we have used the bracelets. Keep your child visible. That is one of the main things. Um, 
the glow stick inside of the pumpkins or some of the lightweight bags, they do work because we've done that before. Um, so we've tried them carrying the flashlights, but it's a lot for them to keep up with their costume and their bucket and a flashlight and because they're just focused on getting to the next light that's on so they can trick or treat, you know, or the next store or, you know, I know a lot of downtown areas in our area will be open late that night for kids to trick or treat downtown. Well, that's great because they can go door to door, but downtown areas can be busy. So again, they're going to dart across the street. So as drivers, we have to be their safety zone that night, especially. And then, you know, I was uh, looking at um, half does that say half the parents talk to their kids about the dangers? Not one by all. One. Not all parents talk. Please talk to your kids. If you're going with them or not, still talk to them so they know what you expect. Um, two times are likely to get hit by a car on Halloween. I mean, wow. I never heard of that happening, but obviously it has. So um, parents, um, the reflecting tape, you know what? I think I like that idea. You can really put that on their costume pretty easily. And I never thought of that. See, uh, you, you're never too old to learn new tricks. Boo, Olivia, I hope I scared you. <laughs> So like we said, you know, we're, we're bringing this to you so you can be prepared and have a safe and, and wonderful holiday with your family and friends. And, uh, you know, Halloween this year falls on Monday Mojo. So guaranteed we'll be coming to you with a Monday Mojo Halloween special. We'll be in costume and we'd love to see your costume and share with us. So please stay tuned yes. for that episode for sure. Absolutely. Oh, this has been a fun, fun show. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And please, please share us some memories. Take a minute and remember your past Halloweens and share them with your kids and, you know, a friend or whomever. But share them with us as well because we want to hear about them. There's so many good ones. Exactly. So many good memories, uh, fun memories, and you can make your own, right? You can make your own traditions. I love I, that trunk or treat um, idea. I think I might just take it to the neighborhood. So this year, because I'm with the Harmony Mind, Body, Spirit Wellness Group, you know, we're going to be doing Halloween in the park. It'll be a daytime event, but I'm going to invite all the kids to come to our Jacksonville Botanical Gardens on a Sunday, uh, the day before Halloween, and come in costume, and we'll do a little daytime trick-or-treating. <laughs> With oh, that is nice. That is nice. Very nice. I know that we have a herd museum and you can check your museums and your um, extracurricular places like that. We have what's called a herd museum and it's like, you know, you can go in and, and uh, see lots of different animals, but it's a nature thing, nature butterflies, um, um, some of the things from the war. But they always, it's out in the country, so they always have a Halloween trail so that you can trick-or-treat. And um, I don't know if they still do the hay rides, but, you know, so many places do. Six Flags, uh, we used to take our girls all the time to Six Flags on Halloween when they got older. When they didn't want to trick-or-treat, we would do all the haunted houses. Um, you know, back then, the, the we didn't pay extra for that. Um, it just came in with your Six Flags. But then when the grandkids came along, the haunted houses, a lot of them you pay extra for. But we've done it. And it's so much fun. So always look around if you don't, you know, if, if your kids are too old to go trick-or-treating, find other fun things to do with them. Or, or just, you know, a lot of people when they have teenagers, they'll just dress up and hand out candy with their teenage kids. Yeah, that's also a fun thing to do too. All right. Awesome. So now it's time for your favorite segment of the show, which is Fave Items Reveal. So let's see what LaDonna has in store to help you get in the Halloween mood. Here we go. One moment here. Oh, look at this incredible display. I love this display I put together. 
it is all vintage. Every piece is vintage and um, it's a lot of decor pieces. Um, the basket you can use for Halloween, Thanksgiving, any time in the fall. And you see the little iron pieces. There's a set of four. Um, again, you can use those all year round if you wanted to. They are metal. They hang. But look at this incredible basket. It's woven basket. I love how the top of it is like double layered. So it's sturdier. The handle's very sturdy. And again, it's all the colors of fall. So it's not just Halloween. And look at this cute little candy dish or trinket dish. Oh, look at these. You put a candle um, in here. It's a, a round ball metal piece. And then it latches. And then you hang um, them on your patio or deck in a tree. Um, and, you know, you can even use the little ones that you turn off and on. You don't have to use the lit candles if you don't want to. Um, but look at that. See, it has a long chain. So you can make it as short or as long as you want there. And it's a set of four and they are vent. They are um, iron, metal, mesh and um, vintage. Oh, and look at this wood piece. It's different size leaves that hang and they are, look at the acorns. Now those are wood acorns. And um, there's several layers. And on the back of the leaves, they have the little cushions so that when it hits your door, it's not going to scratch your door. And I, and again, this is not just a Halloween piece. It could be all of fall because, you know, the acorns and, and the leaves are the fall colors. And I just love that. And it's the twine that connects all of the wood pieces together. Um, so I wanted to find pieces that are not all Halloween, but also fall. So those could hang all the way through Thanksgiving. Look at him. Now he is a scarecrow that is all put together with twine, his arms and legs all bend because they are put together with the twine. He is so handsome. Look at that. All wood. I'm sure someone might have custom made him. I'm not for sure. He is, again, vintage. See his little patch on his knee or leg? I'm showing you there where, you know, they do bend. They're all wood. And again, you can use him for Halloween and Thanksgiving. He's not just a Halloween guy. So cute. I think he's so cute. And what a great decor piece for your uh, to put in a flower arrangement or just sit on your uh, mantle on your fireplace or a table. Great centerpiece. I just love decorating and I just love these pieces and uh, the black cat. I don't know. Some people might use him all the way through Thanksgiving, but he was originally a Halloween piece. See how long that chain is and a nice size hook for those four iron pieces. But you know what? They're cute even if you don't put a light in them. What a conversation piece those are. So what was your favorite piece, Olivia? I really like those um, lanterns. Yes. Like lanterns, like that's such a neat idea that you could put the little tea light in there and then have the lid and then hang it. Like that's a really yes. cool. But they're really pretty awesome. even without the light. I mean, you know, what a conversation piece to have out on your patio or, you know, even if you hung them on a chandelier for the fall, you know, for like a centerpiece over the table. I mean, there's so many things in the chain. You can link it where it can be short, shorter or long, or you can make them different lengths. So I really love that display. Fantastic. You always have such a great creative eye for design. <laughs> Thank you. I try to find pieces that it's hard to find. Um, I Those metal pieces would be very hard to find. Um, you know, all of those pieces are, they, they're not just, you just can't run up to your CVS or, or your Walmart <laughs> or Target and pick those pieces up today. Yes, only available at homesweethometreasures.net. And I love what you yes. said, too, about how you don't have to decorate just for Halloween. You can decorate all through the fall. And so introducing, like, the baskets um, and also just the leaves, right? So that way you can get more use 
out of these items. It's not just one time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, I've said this a hundred times, millions of times. Reuse. Keep reusing. If you don't like the colors of the leaves, do you know how easy that would be to spray paint? Oh my gosh. Add more glitter to them. The lanterns, you could spray paint them any color you want if you don't like the rustic metal look. I mean, reuse. Use, think outside the box. Think outside the box. Exactly. Think outside the box. So we're going to end our show, but not before we tell you our fundraiser this month. So please go ahead and shop this link, tinyurl.com forward slash Uganda children. And also, if you have waiting for your code word, the code word is pumpkin. Yes, pumpkin. And this will give you 15% off your order. So this is valid all throughout tonight, Thursday, and through Friday, midnight Central Standard Time. And if you missed it, our announcement, our big announcement um, early this week about the fundraiser, um, we are supporting the Heavenly Bread Children's Life Center. And here's some information on the screen for you. So yes, so go ahead and use this pumpkin code word and also shop the link. And uh, this will be an amazing way to benefit our cause. Yes, and when you shop the link with the tiny URL, Uganda Children, they will receive 40% of everything that you purchase. And you're gonna receive 15% off if you use the pumpkin um, code word. So please, um, let's help these kiddos get this Life Center to help out um, their education. They're, um, you know, they're going to have rooms there for the kids to stay in until they can find other homes for them. I mean, this is such a great cause. And stay tuned because, you know, we got connected to um, this organization uh, from a very dear colleague, and we're going to bring on Nemu Biru Helen to come talk to us about this and give us an update. So stay tuned for that episode. I'm so excited to, to meet her and to hear about her efforts. Yes, she's going to be on October 17th, and I am excited to hear, you know, they broke ground on the Life Center. I'm excited to hear, you know, have they made any other progress because literally every penny coming in for their fundraiser for the Life Center is going directly to build the Life Center. Yes, so you can do good while celebrating good too. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we are going to close out with a few announcements and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.